In today's notes, we're going to be adding and subtracting radical expressions. So we're finding sums and differences. Recall that terms must be alike in order to add or subtract them. Remember, I mean, if you're adding fractions, you need to have the same thing in your denominator. If you're adding combining like terms, um, you know, and you have a 3x squared, you can only combine it with a 2x squared. You would not be able to combine it with a 4x, right? So you can only combine like terms. Like radical terms have the same radicand. So that's what's underneath the radical. So let's look at that. Like radical terms, for example, in the left over here, like radical terms would be like the square root of 3 plus 4 times the square root of 3, right? Those are, those are like terms. So what I like to tell my students is if you just treat that radical like it's a variable, okay and if it's a different number then that's like having a different variable there right and you can't combine those so in the next example you might say but wait these two radicands are not the same the square root of 5 or root 5 plus root 20 well what i can do root 20 the square root of 20 is not simplified the most it can be simplified so I'm gonna make sure that I put it in simplest form and then determine if they're like radical terms. So if I rewrite the square root of 20, that's the same thing as the square root of four times the square root of five, right? And I wrote it like that in that order because four is a perfect square. And I can rewrite four or the square root of four as two. So now I've got two root five. Now I have root five plus two root five. Now are they like terms? They are, these are both like terms. So let's look at these unlike radical terms where I have root five plus six root two. I don't have the same thing underneath the radical and I can't simplify them any further. So they are not like terms. I can't combine them. Let's look at the square root of eight plus the square root of six. Well, the square root of eight, I can break down into square root of four times the square root of two. And I write it like this because four is the biggest perfect square that goes into eight a whole number of times. What is the square root of four? It's two. Now I have two root two plus root six. Now you can determine if they're like radical terms and are they? Nope, they're not and that's okay. So let's look at example number one. So I have the square root of three plus five square roots of three minus two square roots of three. So what you're going to do is treat these radicals like they are variables. And you're going to combine the number that's in front of the radical, which if nothing is there, you can put a one there. That helps a lot of students. So I'm gonna be combining one plus five, which is six, minus two, which is four, and then I keep that radical, okay? So the, Q, the square root of three. And again, if you were combining like terms, if those were variables, it would have looked like x plus five x minus two x, and you would have gotten four x, right? You keep that variable, variable stays the same. So same thing in radical world. Let's look at example number two. So. I'm trying to add the square root of six plus three square roots of 24, but they, at first glance, don't look like they're like terms. So I'm gonna break this radical down to see then if they're like terms. So the square root of 24 can be broken down into square root of four times the square root of six. What is the square root of four? It's two, two times the square root of six. And then when I have a number out in front of my radical, what do I do with that two? I multiply it. So I'm gonna rewrite this as the square root of six plus two times three is six square roots of six. So now I have the same radicand. I can combine these like terms. Remember, if nothing's out in front of your radical, what can you put there? A one, that helps some students. Now I'm adding one plus six, which is seven, and I keep that radical and what's underneath the radical. So seven root six, that's my answer. Let's move on to the next set of examples. Five root two minus root eight plus two root three. So 
the first thing I need to do is simplify this the square root of 8 and if I do that I know the biggest perfect square that goes into 8 is 4 so I'm gonna rewrite it as square root of 4 times the square root of 2 what is the square root of 4 it's 2 so I'm gonna rewrite this as 2 root 2 and now I'm gonna rewrite the whole thing so I've got 5 root 2 minus 2 root 2 plus 2 root 3 so when we're looking at our like terms, let me change colors here, I can see that root two and root two are like terms. I can combine those numbers out in front, okay, the coefficients. So five minus two is three, radical stays the same. This is not a like term, so don't combine it. It just stays two root three. And that would be your answer. I know it's kind of ugly. A lot of students are more uncomfortable with those kinds of answers, but that's your answer. If you if they're not like terms, you can't combine them, so don't. Just rewrite it. Okay, let's move on to example number four. So there's a lot more going on in example number four and a lot that we have to do um, beforehand. So the first thing we need to do is simplify the square root of 45. The square root of 45 can be broken down into the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. So this 9 is the biggest perfect square that goes into 45. What is the square root of 9? It's 3. So I can rewrite this number as 3 root 5. Plus, now what do we need to do to 20 over the square root of 5? We need to rationalize the denominator. So how do I do that? I multiply it by what I want to get rid of in the denominator, the square root of 5. But what I do to the bottom, I've got to do to the top, which um, I just did a video over rationalizing the denominator. I'll put a little link up top if you need help rationalizing the denominator. Um, click on that video. And it's a very long video, so look at the notes and go to the part that says rationalizing the denominator. So when I do this, I now get 20 root 5 over what happens to that square root of 5. The radical goes away and I'm just left with 5. But I'm still not done because I can simplify the 20 and the 5. I can divide by a common factor, which is 5. 20 divided by 5 is 4. 5 divided by 5 is 1. So I can rewrite it as 4 root 5. And now you can see that we have rewritten that fraction a radical expression with in in its simplest form for root 5 and we've created these like terms right so now we've got like terms now I can combine the coefficients of those radicals so 3 plus 4 is 7 and then the radical and radicands stay the same so 7 root 5 and that number that dot shouldn't be there all right let's move on to example number five number five has a lot going on and I'm gonna make this like super big just like that so we need to obviously simplify each and every radical so the square root of 32 um, you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna rewrite it over here so the square root of 32 that breaks down into the square root of 16 times the square root of 2 which is 4 root 2 so I'm gonna rewrite the square root of 32 as 4 root 2. So now let's simplify the 12 divided by the square root of 2. So 12 divided by the square root of 2, what do I need to multiply the numerator and denominator by? The square root of 2, the square root of 2. So what does that do? Now I have 12 root 2 over... 2 and what can I do with those the 12 and the 2 I can simplify it 12 divided by 2 that's just 6 so what I can do is rewrite this as minus 6 square roots of 2 okay let's move on to the next part and I'm actually going to erase some of this just uh, so I have more room on my screen to simplify some of these you obviously might need to use like the side of your paper or notebook paper or something to show this process so 
All right, moving on. So now we have the square root of 20. So now I need to break down the square root of 20. 20 breaks down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. What is the square root of 4? It's 2. 2 root 5. So I'm going to rewrite this as minus 2 root 5. Then 7 square roots of 8. So 7 square roots of 8. Well, the square root of 8 breaks down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. If I'm going too fast, pause the video, rewind it. I totally understand. Um, if you're not comfortable simplifying radicals, this problem is probably really hard for you. So pause it, rewind, I totally get it. So square root of 8 um, can be broken down. Square root of 4 times square root of 2. What is the square root of 4? It's 2. So 2 root 2. But don't forget, there was a number out in front. So what do I need to multiply this 2 by? That number, 2 times 7, is 14. So that actually is 14 root 2. So this simplifies to plus 14 times the square root of 2. And then I cannot simplify the square root of 5. So let me just kind of clean this up a bit so it's not so overwhelming. And I can only go as quick as my eraser will let me look at all of these over here. Okay. All right. And let's change colors here. So when I'm combining like terms, I'm going to identify those like radicands, right? So 4 square roots of 2 is a like term with negative 6 root 2 and then plus 14 root 2. So if I combine all of those, I'm combining the numbers out in front, right? The coefficients. So 4 minus 6 plus 14. And what is that? 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 14 is positive 12. So 12 root 2, right? Radical stays the same. So now let's look at the next part. The next part is negative 2 root 5 and negative 5 are like terms. If nothing is in front of that radical, you can put a 1 there. And now we're going to combine negative 2 and negative 1 to get negative 3. Radical stays the same. Minus 3 root 5 or 3 square roots of 5. And that is my answer. So let's move on to our final example where we have radicals in the denominator, but they're the same radical, which is really nice because when I'm adding or subtracting fractions, I need the same denominator. And in this case, since I have the same denominator, I don't really need to do anything at this point. I just combine their numerators. So what I'm going to do is 12, whoops, 12, is it going to do it? Let me erase this. That didn't really work. That's going to be 12 minus 3. What is 12 minus 3? It's 9. When I'm adding or subtracting fractions, denominator stays the same, right? Adding fractions ain't no thing. Just add the tops and the bottom stays the same. Same for subtracting. So I get the square root of 15. So now I have 9 over root 15, and I know that I cannot leave that radical in the denominator, so I need to rationalize it. What do I do? I multiply by what I want to get rid of, the square root of 15. What I do to the bottom, I got to do to the top. 9 times the square root of 15, right? We're just multiplying across. It's 9 root 15 over... Square root of 15 times the square root of 15 is just 15. And now I can simplify that 9 over 15 by dividing by 3. That's my common factor. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. I'm left with 3 root 15 over... Oh, does that really look like that? I should probably write that a little bit better so you can see it. And I'll change colors at this point just because, why not? So that becomes 3 root 15 over 5. And that is my answer. 3 times the square root of 15 
over 5. And that concludes your notes over adding and subtracting radical expressions. I hope it was helpful.